Welcome to IT Pro TV. I'm your host, Don. Back to you live from San Francisco. You're watching IT Pro TV. Hello, everyone, and welcome back to another exciting edition of IT Pro TV. I'm your host, Vaughn Smith, and this is our Cisco Cloud Fundamentals series, and we are looking at our cloud deployment models, our last one, which is the hybrid cloud. And here he is, Mr. Ronnie Wong. How are you? I am doing well, Vaughn. Thank you again for asking as we continue on, and thank you for joining us as we continue on through our trek. And Vaughn, you have been a trooper in me essentially spending a better half of multiple episodes in one paragraph of the NIST uh, SP800-145. Uh, if you're not exactly sure what I'm talking about, make sure you go back and check out the other episodes here. But I'm about to show you exactly what I'm talking about as well. So we're about to talk, of course, about the idea of hybrid cloud. Okay, And what we want to do is make sure that we have a, at least a basic understanding of this. We're going to talk about a key feature, which we normally don't end up talking about a lot of times. And then, of course, the risk and challenges like we've been doing with every single model that we've gone over and then talk about a basic example as well, okay? So everything, of course, begins back here at the NIST uh, special uh, publication 800-145, and in the second section, this particular paragraph is what Vaughn has been a trooper in, and actually helping me as we've gone through this multiple, multiple times here, just to make sure that we understand. Remember that the overall idea here is that this is about a model of access that we are going to be using not about the underlying technology that we're talking about. And the model that we're actually talking about, of course, has, well, as far as five different characteristics, three service models, and now we are in number four of four deployment models that we have to talk about. And so Vaughn has heard me say that phrase over and over again in every episode. And Vaughn's probably saying, I can't believe it. That's like 10 or 15 episodes that we've done now uh, with this. Actually, quite a few episodes, right? But repetition is... Well, part of learning, you got to keep going over it and going over it. So, and you said like this is like 30% of the test. It is. That we've already gone over. So, we're, we are drilling this into your heads as much as possible. Yeah, I hate to say that. Vaughn was just looking this up between our break, and it's like 55 to 65 questions. Yeah, somewhere around, there. and it varies, right? Depending, depending on what you have here. But if you think about 30% of 60 questions, that's 20 questions that can come from here. And all of a sudden, you start shaking it like, no, that's quite a few questions. Yes. Quite a few questions, but that's why we're going over it in such detail, okay? So here is our last definition where we're taking a look at the idea of hybrid cloud, and now uh, let's take a look here, okay? So what we're actually uh, taking a look at here is cloud infrastructure is a composition of two or more distinct cloud infrastructures, okay? So that means you can have a combination of private and community cloud, or you can have public and private cloud, okay? Or you can have community and public, okay? Whichever way you go about doing it, essentially, you're, you're actually saying that there's two or more distinct uh, infrastructures. So, in other words, it could be all three if you actually wanted them to be, depending on the need of your network. And here, now it actually says, but they actually remain, okay, two unique entities for doing so. So, we're not actually merging them together to make them become one technology. We're actually using what we actually need that's available to us so that we can get the job done that we need to, okay? Now, when it comes down to the hybrid cloud environment itself, this one doesn't really look a lot different. Let's make sure that we understand from the very beginning that we've had it, right? Right in the, in the public cloud itself, right? We have essentially the internet, and we connect across it from the internet. It doesn't matter who actually connects in to that global cloud environment. We go to the private cloud. This is for one distinct company, okay? And everything that's actually set up there is also the same way. We went over all the risk and challenges there. We've also, of course, talked about the community cloud itself. Remember, multiple companies, but they have that shared common characteristic that they want to make sure that they actually maintain. And the majority of that, of course, comes through the standards that uh, communities have to actually be able to meet in terms of some of these different ones. And now when we head into the hybrid cloud, this one is a little bit different as well. Okay, So when we take a look... Now notice that what I've done is kind of added in a combination of both of these, right? I have a private cloud, and I have a public cloud here. Now, you can directly connect your company to the public cloud if you want to, and then also have another connection over to the private cloud if you want to. So I could have drawn another cloud here, labeled it as internet, connect it to the company, and do that. But 
that's not what we want, right? We want this to actually be a secured solution between all of the actual pieces here, right? Between my infrastructure that I have here on, on uh, premises, as well as the private cloud environment that I have, all the way out to the public cloud and what resources that we need out here too, okay? But if I directly connect across the internet now, that means I'm not part of this private WAN network, which means I have shared data that is going across networks here. So this is the way that we establish it and actually bring a secure link between all of these different pieces that we have, okay? Now, the advantage of a feature of, some, of using something like the idea of the hybrid cloud comes with a unique feature here, and I wanna make sure that I type this particular feature out so that we can see it, because this is actually a key feature. Ooh, that's bigger than I wanted it to be. Let me change the, do that a little bit better. And somehow I actually changed that to like 36 point here. Be right back. Now I'll zoom in so that we can see it. Okay, key feature. And Vaughn, there is a feature that we call cloud bursting. Except the way that I spell it. Okay, that's pretty much not the case. Cloud bursting. Okay. So the key feature behind this idea of cloud bursting is fairly simple. When you, as a company, you begin to, of course, consume the resources of your private cloud, you may find out where at some point you're at 100% of your private cloud usage. Well, what do you do then, Vaughn, when you need more than that? Okay? Your cloud bursts. Yes, and that is the idea, is what we call cloud bursting. Now, that's only if we actually have set up a hybrid cloud. If we set up a private cloud, it's kind of toast at that point, which means we need to add in more infrastructure, which, of course, is fairly costly, because even the private cloud environment, right, that means we have to, again, spin up more. We have to do more, and that's perfectly fine. But what if there was a solution? Let's say that the public cloud here, that we said, look, we're not going to access it for long, but it's going to be temporary until we can get something done here, okay? What if I went ahead and set up a private cloud within this public cloud as well and connected to it through a secured connection, okay? If I do something like that, I might be able to use what the lower prices of the pri of the public cloud okay, to help me to just get by when I actually need to. So it actually allows me to provision the applications to the public or to the private cloud, usually to the public cloud, when it's actually needed at that point in time. Okay, Because if we overwhelm the resources of the private cloud and we don't have any place to go, we're actually in trouble at that point. It's kind of like the, the overflow, like yep. what we've gone over, so it's going to spill over into somewhere else, and then when we don't, it's going to kind of go back into where it needs. Uh, and that's the idea of what load balancing means in general? Well, not load balancing, cloud bursting. Cloud bursting. Yeah, cloud okay. bursting, okay? So cloud bursting, yes, it has an elasticity to it and the fact that we need it when we need it. So what is the disadvantage of what I said? Add in additional infrastructure to the private cloud to handle the capacity that I need. Well, Vaughn, what if I didn't need it all the time, okay? In other words, what if I actually had just heavier load of traffic into the private cloud during the peak work hours of the day, okay? Well, if I just go ahead, well, I need more infrastructure. Well, now I'm paying for that 24 hours a day, okay, instead, and I don't need it all the time, okay? Well, if I actually do this using the private cloud, okay, even host it up that way, there may be where I actually have to kind of re kind of model and reuse some of the things. But what if I can actually connect it to another one, which was already set up here, and just have it burst over. And then when I don't need it, it actually just allows me to keep my network as stable as I want to be. Okay. So that's usually the key feature when we start talking about the idea of using private uh, or not private hybrid cloud environments too. Okay. Now, the other thing about hybrid cloud environments, it does help you do some of the same things that the community cloud did as well where you might have to have certain portions of your data that's protected in terms of a private cloud or even stored on premises on your data center. So you can build all that up and actually do that, but there's other portions where you might go, no, we're gonna use Office 365 and we need to make sure that we get access to that too. So you can use a combination of what you need to help you build a final solution. So you're not locked into just a private cloud. You can use both of them the key here, especially if you're working in regulated industry, is a secured connection between all of them. So we have to then, Vaughn, ask the idea here. Well, what is the idea of the risk and challenges? Then? Okay. So when we start talking about risk and challenges, like we've done with every other uh, type of uh, deployment model that we've talked about here, well, 
these are some of the things that we have to make sure that we do understand and we, we accept it, okay? One of them, of course, is the idea that we might have different technologies that run, okay? Different technologies in the private versus the public. So they might not talk to each other. Not the way that we want them to, okay? Yeah. They might talk to each other. Or they might barely talk to each other. Yeah. Let's put it that way, okay? So when you have something like that, it could be that the technology isn't as fully integrated the way that we think it should be. And that's because private clouds, they normally are fairly specific to the purpose that we want them to be. It doesn't mean that every single cloud provider will actually have that environment ready and up and going, okay? The other thing that we have to worry about, of course, is that when we start heading into the, the nature, okay, of adding in private cloud or even the addition of the public cloud, is it may not meet the security requirements, like we said, the compliance requirements that we have, okay? So may not meet security requirements in the public cloud. So it doesn't mean that it can't, but it may mean that you have to kind of set this up a little bit more technically involved than what you're actually ready to get into, okay? So that is a possibility here. Let me move some of this stuff up as I'm starting to challenge our screen space here. I'll move that over a little bit and see what we can do, okay? All right, so what are some of the other things that we can also do here too, okay? Well, remember that once we have that in place, okay, uh, you may find out that you can't integrate the technology as easily, okay? So even though they might not be able to talk, okay, but integration may be difficult. So there's a possibility there that that might be more challenging than we actually think. The other thing, of course, is on top of that, uh, especially with the networking tech, no, no, yeah, this is actually going to be the same thing. So it may be difficult, okay, whether it's actually server-wise or uh, not server-wise. Let's see uh, what's the best way to do this, okay, uh, is, yeah, no, network technology may be difficult, uh, especially networking. I'm reading a little bit too fast here, networking. All right. So it may be difficult in terms of networking that we have. Also, of course, you may find out that you don't have the full functionality the way that you want to in terms of applications. So like going through the private cloud, it may limit you to get access to what you think that you might be able to do. Depending on the age of your private cloud, you may find out that the newer encryption standards that are over here in the public cloud, they don't work well with your private cloud. That's also a possibility. And the way that we manage things through our private cloud may not give us visibility into how it's actually being worked on over here in the public cloud either. So all those different things can become challenging to us. I just typed out a few of them. I'll have the rest in the notes for you. But you can kind of see that even though this might be a solution, especially when you do have the, the nature or the need to do some cloud bursting that may go on, you still have to actually take into consideration here all these different risks and challenges that you may not have actually thought about as you continue to move forward with this uh, particular nature of, of the things that are going on, okay? So this environment is not for everyone, okay? But it can be a full benefit for a company that really does have that certain need, right? That they want to actually say, hey, I want to make sure all my email is still running through my company here on premises. So you may actually have your entire private cloud being run at a data center on your own, which is perfectly fine. But then you may, again, actually have other things that are run up in the cloud environment and if you do that, that means you have a secured connection in and that you can actually do everything that you need to, okay? Now, Vaughn, as far as this particular space goes, it can all be integrated in whatever provider that you want to, okay? But I did want to introduce, if you haven't actually heard about it, okay, is a, a company called Rackspace. It's a multi-billion dollar uh, Rackspace company here. You've been there. I have actually been there. They've, uh, they're a pretty cool bunch of people. And didn't you slide down the slide? I slid down the slide in the middle. Yeah, they actually have a twisty, turny slide right in the middle of that company. Uh, and To you know, connect like the, the second floor to the first floor or whatever, you can go down the slide. Yeah, that's because the entire company fits in a mall is what it fits in, okay? So, yeah, they're, they're huge, okay? But they actually have chosen, instead of trying to carve out like the public uh, cloud space, okay, and not really, you know, saying, hey, we're only dedicated to private cloud, they have actually tried to say, hey, look, we're in charge here. We're high. Uh, you know, we're, we're high on the hog, okay, 
here in terms of what we call the hybrid cloud instead. And so here... This is their niche market. Yeah, this is where they, they tend to excel. I want to make sure here. Manage cloud. Cool. They have different ones that are available, okay? When they talk about manage cloud, they're saying, hey, they'll manage it for you. In other words, they'll provide not only that ability for you to get access to this, but they'll manage it for you. In other words, all you have to do is buy... Oh, I didn't want the multi-cloud. I wanted the uh, hybrid cloud. I was going to say, which one did I choose? Okay. See, that's what happens when I work too quick. Okay. There we go. All right. Well, I guess it's going to leave me the same thing. Okay. So <laughs> I was like, uh, where did the hybrid cloud one go? But we'll use their multi-cloud uh, is what will actually end up working uh, instead. So they show you like all the different things and why you should actually choose to work with them uh, in the, I don't know. Maybe uh, refresh your browser? I think, yeah, I would think that just, let's see if I can actually refresh the browser. Let's say that. You know, this is uh, one of those things. Let's see, one more time. Let's try it again. Let's see if I can go back to the overview. We'll go back to the overview. There we go. Let's see if I can get there from here. It's going to spit me back out at the, oh, finally. I was like, why is that not that, Yeah, working? that was a little weird. Yeah. I was watching. I'm like, wait, you clicked on that. Why aren't you going there? Yeah. So this is where we have. So sometimes the best environment for a workload is one that combines both public, private, and single tenant dedicated environments here. And that's why they created a true hybrid cloud with multi-cloud flexibility. You can connect dedicated bare, to uh, dedicated bare metal environments okay, to allow you to do that. And that's kind of the, the key and idea behind what they do and they are really good at actually doing this okay so this is the market that they've really tried to carve out here and you can see that they work with everything that's actually out there okay whether you're actually using vmware aws as part of that solution they'll say oh no you don't have to worry about integrating it vaughn if you need it we'll integrate it for you together with your particular environment that you want to and they'll go ahead and do so what they like to talk about is that, you know, they actually have fanatical support is what they have. You can see where they talk about a fanatical experience here. Uh, the building's actually located on one fanatical way is actually where it's located. You know, in, uh, yeah. Oh, that's Go figure. cute. Yeah, one, <laughs> one, yeah, one fanatical like that. way. It's pretty darn neat. But overall, though, there are different companies that do carve out niche markets in what they do. Okay, And, uh, you know, with Rackspace, they like to do the managed provider. So the neat thing, like I said, you just pay for it and they'll actually manage the whole thing for you. It means if you have problems with the security, you call them up, they handle it for you as well. You're probably seeing more of that in the hybrid environment because it works so well. And the very fact is you have a group of people that are very good at what they do, like Rackspace, that's probably the one that you actually end up going with unless you really love trying to manage a cloud environment as well as either multiple cloud environments or the idea of an on-premise cloud environment and a cloud environment, okay? So you just n name it. There's a bunch of different technical reasons why you might go with something like Rackspace. But in that sense, Vaughn, all these are actually great different ways that we can approach this. Every company you run into, you more than likely, it's going to be one of these uh, particular deployment models that you're going to go to, okay? The most popular by far, public. Next to that, of course, is going to be the idea of the private, okay? Less popular than that is, of course, the idea here of, well, the hybrid environment, and even less popular that's really highly specialized in terms of just industries uh, is going to be something like a community cloud instead. So all four of those are essentially the, the ones that you have to make sure that you understand for the exam, as well as those five characteristics and the three service models, and that will help you to make sure that you are prepared, at least for this particular domain objective, for the actual cloud fundamentals exam as well. Make sure you take a note of that because it's actually very important that you don't skip over this. Even if you think you know it all, the reason why we've gone over it in the way that we have is that we've approached it from the Cisco perspective, and they really do separate that, out that idea of what's the cloud provider's responsibility versus the actual customer's responsibility. They have also approached the idea here of cloud from the standpoint of what are the challenges and what are the risks associated with using each one of these things, too, and, of course, the definition itself, making sure you understand the five different elements that are there. All the other things we've also put in there, those are highly testable as well. The list that we have, the different service providers, all of these are actually important elements that you need to make sure that you understand before you head in to sit for this exam. So, Vaughn, that should wrap up, uh, at least for us here, really the first two domain objectives 
for that exam. And uh, in that sense, there's a lot more to come. But this one, though, will help us to put, you know, a, a kind of cap on at least these first two domain objectives. And that means we have three left that we have to cover. Still a lot of material, and it's going to go a bit slower than what we've actually been doing because now we're going to get into some nitty-gritty of the details on how some of the stuff works from the Cisco perspective. All right, we just uh, described the popularity of our cloud deployment models. That sounds just like the clicks in my high school. Mm -hmm. And I was not part of the top. But that's oh. okay. That's all right. Uh. I like this here because I'm learning, and I can take those people out. <laughs> that sounded really mean. Okay, anyways, we're going to go ahead and wrap this up. So signing off for IT Pro TV, I've been your host, Vaughn Smith. And I'm Ronnie Wong. And we'll see you soon. Thank you for watching IT Pro TV.